Okay, well, hey everyone, how's it going? This is not one of my better videos. This is a vlog video, and I figured that uh, I would kind of update you guys on what's going on with the whole battery situation. So ever since, what, three, four days ago, I have, uh, I put out that video on what's better for me, LTO or Life Before. I have received an enormous amount of response to that. I'm getting emails and text messages. I've been talked to a few people about it and their experience, and that's just wonderful. That was what I was looking for. And uh, it seems like I would lean one direction, somebody would call me, and then I'd start leaning the other direction. Somebody would call me or text me or send me an email. I'd lean back in the other direction. And um, it's uh, it's one of those things where... No matter what, this is going to be a difficult decision to make, but I am really, truly now starting to lean towards the life before, towards the 280 amp hour cells, and the seller um, that uh, I was uh, led to, I've been in contact with them for the past couple of days. Um, they are going to be able to get me some uh, some cells when I do decide. Right now I'm still working on the pricing and checking out a couple of other uh, places. But I think, truly, I think what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be doing the 280 amp hour life bulb four cells. There's a couple of reasons for this. The first reason is cost obviously cost is a big thing right now and in order for us to be able to get the ele electricity requirements we're going to need upwards of 60 to 70 thousand dollars worth of LTO batteries right now this is not in the cards it's just not unfortunately I wish that we could save another year or another two but I'm trying to get on this as soon as we possibly can the waiting game is great but i have concerns so i am wanting to get into this uh sooner than later and i do completely understand that i could buy chunks of 16 of these batteries at a time and slowly build my way up and i might even do that in a very limited capacity. Still my concern is mixing and matching of batteries. I don't want to put 100 or 200 cycles on a pack of batteries and then you know that when you're talking 6,000 cycles if I did that once a month then the oldest set would be 1,200 cycles underneath the newest set and that's that's too much I think. Um, so I'm going to try to get as many of these as I can in bulk, basically. This isn't going to happen tomorrow. This is something that, obviously, we have to work on and prioritize and, and things like that. We've got a lot of stuff. Unfortunately, I can use these batteries as a small portion of a business write-off because we do use electricity to not only build but also test. And, you know, um, roughly, I don't know, it's like... 10 or 20 percent of this home and property is used for the business so that could be a good argument to have um, you know uh, uh, an exemption there whatever you want to call it I'm not the accountant but that was brought up by the accountant so <laughs> the uh, the thing is is that we can actually write some of this down because we will legitimately use it for business this is not just some shady way of getting money off of it as much electricity as I spend testing and running these inverters, um, it certainly is a business expense. And basically the whole basement, all the electricity I use down here, with the exception of the furnace and the hot water heater, I mean, there's a couple things. You could get really deep into it if you really wanted to and say, well, a portion of the heat goes to the business and a portion of the hot water goes to the business. You could really get deep if you want and really itemize it right down to the penny. Um, but the point is, is that we can use some of this for business. So that'll be, that'll be a help, not, not a whole ton, but it'll be, it'll be, um, helpful for that. Um, so cost is a huge, huge deal right now. Um, 
there's another concern <clears throat> with with LTO. I'm still not 100% convinced yet, and I know I've received some some data on uh, some people sent me some data on calendar life and that kind of stuff. But I'm still not 100% convinced that the LTO cells, even the good ones, will last 30 to 60,000 cycles. I'm not convinced yet. It, it just you know, LiPo4 has been around for a while, and because it theoretically has a shorter life than LTO, we, you have a better picture of how long LiPo4 will last. And there's certain variables that can affect the overall life, like temperature and depth of discharge, obviously, but looking at the calendar life, if I were to go with these new prismatic cells, I'm looking at between 20 and 25 years on the set. And that's to about where I'm going to notice that there's going to be a problem, right at about the 60 to 70% life point, where then I need to start actually looking at replacing those. And that is a disadvantage where if things are really bad in, let's say, 20 or 25 years, if you can't get lithium, then, you know, basically we're kind of screwed but I will keep my eye out for other technologies that come along if things are okay and be able to then look into that and possibly upgrade to that or if there is a technology that allows you to store them in boxes indefinitely uh, then obviously I would slowly invest in that just keep them charged up and then when it's time to replace the LiPo 4 batteries I just swap them in and I'm done um, so yeah I don't think with as much money as it's going to take to do this, with the technology being as new as it is, the, the appeal being that it has an incredible cycle uh, quantity and that you can really dive deep into the depth of discharge without affecting the cycles in a negative way, without losing cycles uh, faster than you would normally, that's really appealing. However, um, the expense is just far too great right now. Uh, so I made the decision basically that I am really leaning on these 280 packs, uh, these prismatic cells, and I'm inquiring with several of these sellers to find out, you know, what they have, what their guarantees are and, and things like that. As far as the BMS goes, Sid already has a BMS. We've got the, the GS BMS, you know, I'm using it on the, uh, the lithium ion batteries right now. And likely by the time this happens, Sid would then be able to come up with something a little bit more um, advanced. Uh, and, you know, we would we'd be set there. So I'm not worried about the BMS. I'm not going to go out and get a, what do they call it, a Molly BMS or whatever that is. That seems to be the go-to BMS for everything. Everybody seems to talk about that BMS and want that BMS. Um, I would rather put a little bit more work into it and save some money and do the soldering myself make all the connections myself rather than use one of those BMSs. That's just a personal opinion. I don't know much about the those popular BMSs, but um, I know it would be far cheaper to go with SID's BMS than it would be to go with one of those. And SID's been using, you know, a similar system on his batteries for, I think, what, five years now. And I think he'd be perfect. You know, if it's working great now for five years, then, you know, I think it'll be just fine. So... Uh, I'll just use his BMS system for that. And we'll have to figure out things like cooling and, and heat sinks and all the other stuff. There's a lot that has to be done. Now, one of the, the concerns that I have is the, the amount of cells that I'm going to need. And this is why I'm leaning away from LTO because of cost. Um, and Sid and I were, well, Sid was doing basically all the math. I hate math, so whatever. Um, Sid was doing the math because um, he can do all this stuff in his head basically um, but considering our needs and yes we would have to make some decisions as far as you know basically telling the kids hey they can't they can't watch TV tonight they can't do this tonight we have to live in our laundry to this and so on there's going to be some concessions unfortunately and as much as I wanted to say I don't want to have to concede on anything there's going to be, unfortunately, some concessions in the wintertime. In the summertime, we don't have a problem. Uh, we have way more sunny days in the summertime. The, we have 
uh, way longer days, obviously. And we don't have a problem. With that small system that I have out there right now, it, we were off the grid all day long. From sunup till sundown, we were completely off the grid. And so that's not a problem. But winter is obviously a huge problem for us. Today, just by coincidence, of course, when I take everything down and I'm not bringing in any solar, of course it's going to be fully sun. We didn't see a single cloud today. And that's really depressing. So if you ever want the sun to come out, just shut your panels off and the sun's going to come out. As soon as you turn the panels back on, it's going to storm for the next week. Just the way that it is. So we had a beautiful sunny day today. I'm thinking, oh man, I could have, you know, and my BMS was going crazy all day long because it was fully charged. And uh, it, was, it was depressing to say the least. I could have waited. But that's the thing about wintertime is you don't know. And that, that old saying uh, in here in Michigan, at least, if you don't like the weather, just wait five minutes. Uh, that's, that's gospel here because you can look at the weather for a week and I guarantee you it's going to change every single day. Just the way that it is. You think it's going to be nice? No, it's going to snow. Uh, it's just the way that it is here in Michigan. So you can never tell what is what in Michigan. So... If I had, and you know, Sid did the number crunching for me, you know, 36 kilowatts of solar, assuming, let's say, I'm putting out 10% of that on a cloudy day in the winter with five hours of potential sunlight, that's pretty pathetic when it comes to how much I'm actually bringing in. I might have a great capacity, but if I can't replenish that capacity in a day, then I'm dipping into the batteries more than I should. And that's eventually going to lead to dead batteries. I mean, obviously. That's a tough position to be in. So do I add more solar? Do I have 48 kilowatts of solar out there? I mean, it's tough. It's, it's just our needs are very, very high. Even if we went down to the basics, our needs are high. Um, so... 36 kilowatts of solar is the bare minimum, and winter is going to be terrible. We can heat, obviously, the house on wood, but we're using about a kilowatt and a half per hour to heat the house because there's two big blowers that blow the heat from the wood furnace through the house. So even in the wintertime, um, you know, I can, uh, uh, you know, well, whatever. Anyway, you get the point. You know, you're looking at um, 35, 40 upwards of 50 kilowatts of energy being used just to heat the house in electricity from the wood furnace. Uh, and I would have to come up with a way to be able to replenish that. And if I'm only generating 10% of my capacity, you can see real quick what's going to end up happening. I'm going to end up getting a couple of days of battery and then be completely dead. So that is a concern. So I initially said I was going to need 2,800 amp hours and figured that I would be comfortable there. But now I'm moving towards, you know, right around 3,400 amp hours or so. I mean, it could get crazy. I could go up to 4,000 amp hours and it just gets so expensive. But and there's also room. Another thing that I have to consider with this whole thing is room. I'm going to have a room full of batteries, a battery rack that has to be able to hold all these batteries. I would need a common positive and negative bus bar that's thick enough to be able to handle all of that current going back and forth, not only from solar coming in, but also the inverters going out, the charge controllers, etc. And it's not a good idea to, you know, have, you know, non- um, you know, your cables, you don't want them mismatched and all the other stuff. So it has to be designed where all of the batteries, you know, the negative is going to be on one side, the positive is going to be on the other. And these cells, you know, they're going to make up four, four and a half feet in length of a 48 volt battery pack. So that means that almost five feet apart are going to be the positive and negative rails. So, and all the battery packs have to connect to that. And it's... I can't do like four or 5,000 amp hours with the stuff I'm going to run out of room. I'm not going to have any room to put all those batteries. That's a crazy amount of batteries. Um, and they would all have to tie into the system all as one, um, which is also another problem. And I'm not going to split it up like, oh, here's a third worth of batteries and one inverter. Here's a third worth of batteries and one inverter. Here's a third worth of batteries and one inverter. I'm not going to do that. 
it's all going to be one big battery bank. All the solar panels are going to go to the same batteries. All the inverters are going to go to the same batteries. It's all going to be one big chunk of renewable energy stuff. So um, it is going to be a challenge. There's no doubt about that. I'm not going to build a, some cheap wood thing, which is perfectly acceptable. I'm not saying you shouldn't. Um, solar Garage does that. He saved a lot of money by doing so. But I want something that's, you know made out of angle iron or something like that i got my neighbor who's a welder he can weld me some racks that are very strong that uh that i can put up but I'll, you know it's considering just how many batteries i need and how to get them all wired up together that is a going to be a challenge i'm gonna have to have bus bars made copper you know, either nickel plated or tinned copper bus bars that will be able to handle you know maybe a thousand or more amps with all the solar coming in or or whatever i mean there's going to be a lot there's going to be a lot going on um so that's a that's another thing that, that i have to consider is getting all the system together how to tie it all together safely i don't want just wires hanging all over i really don't want some couple of bus bars just kind of exposed you know i need some cover for them and, and things like that it's really really complicated and i was looking at some of those rack mount battery systems they're nice they come with their own bms but they're very expensive um that would be a safer option but again much more expensive than if i just built it myself using my own prismatic cells uh individually so you can see here there's a lot going on uh with this i think lto is definitely the future for sure, I just think it's way too pricey right now. I really do. I, 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 it's really tempting. I'd love to spend the extra money for LTO, but at least now it's not worth it. And I don't want to wait around for a year or two and say, "Oh, well, it's going to get cheaper." Because I just, I just have concerns. That's all. I don't want to wait on this for to, to get too cheap. And, you know, when it comes down to it, if things get really serious and we have to make some serious sacrifices, then fine. And it's just one of those things where I may be forced into micromanaging. I might have to be. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. But, yeah, we're going to, I'm going to have to do some, some more, a better effort into things. Uh, the winter time is just absolutely terrible for us. I'm going to have to find a way to help heat this house, either with mini splits or something besides wood. Um, having a heat source backup uh, that won't cost us anything, basically, that won't, um, you know what I mean, that, that I don't have to count on somebody else for a fuel source that I have to order in or whatever. And uh, we'll just have to, you know, just we'll just have to figure it out. It's going to take some more work, so... Anyway, 18 minutes now I've gone on with this video, so I'm kind of leaning on, I'm really leaning on those 280 amp hour uh, LiPo 4 cells. And right now I'm looking at some that um, for 16 cells, this 16, yeah, cells, this seller <laughs> is selling 16, a 16 pack of 280s. For one thousand ninety-six dollars and ninety-nine cents plus shipping, obviously. So if you have a place that you know of that's cheaper, and I want new cells, I'm not going with used. I'm not going with gently used, or it was only used in a battery backup, never cycled, blah blah blah. I want brand new, fresh off the line cells. If you know a seller that's legitimate that sells them for cheaper, send me your links because I would be more than willing to entertain it. This. This particular seller that I'm looking at right now was recommended to me as a good, honest supplier of these with genuine cells. So um, if you have someone who has them for cheaper, of course, I'm going to entertain that. And so anyways, uh, I think we'll pretty much cut it off there. But I do, first of all, thank you very, very much, all of you literally dozens of you came forward with a bunch of information i had several phone calls legitimately good conversations and there was a wealth of information and that's what's awesome and when i do pull the trigger on some of this stuff you will see me build up my system 
and it might appeal to you it might not uh, but it is getting off the grid as quick as we possibly can and being able to sustain ourselves so you know you guys are going to see me doing stuff with the solar and the batteries and so on i mean i uh, you know i'm getting really really serious about this i have some legitimate concerns and i know that a lot of you have the same exact concerns or else you wouldn't be calling me up because you're all getting off the grid every one of you are getting off the grid you're not going to be dependent on someone else for a fuel source or electricity or anything else like that so a lot of you are getting off the grid and um you know that's that's great um so anyways i think we'll stop it there so there you have it um again i don't need a bms i don't need anything that's an all-in-one that has a bms i don't need any of that stuff i'm just going to use sid's bms's and um you know i think i think that'll pretty much cover it and you know i think we'll be pretty much all set there so again thank you for all the feedback and hopefully this year it may not happen this year it's a lot hopefully this year i mean if you don't think that it's a major concern that i'm adding batteries you know every month or two if you don't think that's going to be a big deal that's fine i just don't want to get to the end of the cycles and then the battery bank degrade because the oldest cells are dragging it down and I don't know, maybe that's only for lead acid. Maybe that's only the way that it is for, for lead acid. Maybe it's just overall capacity is reduced but doesn't affect the top cells. It's only going to affect the bottom cells. So I might get shorter time off the grid, so to speak, but it's not going to damage or bring down those those top cells, the ones that are the newest. I don't know. I mean, if that's the case, then fine, I'll... I'll do 16 every month or something like that until it's completely built up. The thing that worries me the most is I don't want the whole system or the top cells, the newest cells, to become damaged or suddenly have to do a lot more work and then obviously become more damaged or be cycled more or do more heavy lifting or something like that that's going to take cycles away from them. I don't want the oldest cells to damage the newest cells, basically is what I'm saying. And I know you can't really mix and match lead acid. That's, um, you know, that'll bring your whole system down, your whole voltage and all this other stuff. And then the newest cells have to work harder and then they become damaged. So anyway, you know, if that's not really a big concern, you know, I can, I can start building and ordering this, you know, in a couple of months, really, and just keep slowly adding on to it and get everything all figured out. And anyways, so anyway, thanks again for all of your support, really from the bottom of my heart. Thanks for all of your support. We had a lot of great conversation, and I'm pretty sure that I know what I'm going to do. So um, that's where we're going with this. Um, so anyway, uh, thank you again. Appreciate it. Have yourself a great night. And as always, take care.